Here we are today with another great podcast. I'm here with my friend Rick. Hello, Keith. How are you? Great to see you, Rick. <laughs> always. <laughs> yes, it always is great to be together. And this is the 10th year of our friendship. How about that? You know, we've been tight for a long time. And uh, today, what we want to talk about is breaking up. <laughs> no, no, that's not it. We're I hope to... not. No, <laughs> that's a surprise to me. <laughs> I think we're going to talk about something that's a little different, though. Right. Which yeah. is, I mean, something serious, too. And that's like, um, what do we do when we're not always optimistic? I mean, right. when, when things are negative and not going properly, I mean, isn't that part of life? You know, from my point of view, I think that maybe we expect ourselves to be 100% all the time positive and optimistic. And I think it's important to look at the good side, but I also think it's important to take lessons from and appreciate the stuff that's not so good. You said it, the lessons. And I've had some really great teachers that have helped me along the way with this. Mm -hmm. One is Debbie Ford. Her book is called The Dark Side of Light Chasers. And she has another one that's called The Shadow Effect. Wow. And it talks wow. about this dark or negative, or what we think is negative about us, that there's value in it. And when you suppress it, Ooh. you're actually hurting yourself and it's going to come out in ways that can be destructive. So in other words, you have a situation where you know, you're pushing it down, pushing it down, trying to be this superstar where you're always on top of things. And then in, you know, when you get out of that a little bit, it still is there and you haven't dealt with it, so it comes up and it hurts a relationship. It hurts your relationship, it hurts you, and if you suppress it long enough, it becomes impossible to manage. Mm. You know, so an example uh, with me was, I went through a period to where I was, uh, had some struggles financially, and so I was trying to hide it. You know, uh, like I had to get uh, a used car, because the car that I, the luxury car that I was driving, I could no longer afford it. And so to hide it, I was going to all these great lengths to hide it. You know, I'd park, a long way from the gym and have to walk in 120 degree weather. Uh, I wouldn't, I didn't tell any friends about it. You know, that's one example. I was declining invitations uh, from people that anything would cost me money. But I was acting as if that, you know, I was still doing really, really well, you know, financially. And so, and it was damaging my relationships because there was a lack of honesty there. And I was constantly consumed that people would either find out or that I had to continue to hide it. And so I was suppressing that. The minute that I you know, got to where I was helped, actually my mom helped me embrace that side of what was going on in my life, things changed. I became freer mm. because I was yeah. being honest with <laughs> it. And yeah, I mean, would I like to have a, a luxury car? I mean, it's not a bad thing to have. I'm, I'm not as materialistic as I used to be or, or attached uh, to material things as I was. But uh, the, the gift in that was, was appreciating what you had. Like I was lacking gratitude for what I had, so that was a downside. And by not suppressing it anymore, being very honest about what was going on in my life financially, what happened was other people that learned of it because of my sharing, they started sharing what they were going through uh, and how they were suppressing yeah, it too. Yeah, yeah. So it made for deeper connections with my friends. Boy, that's a great example. That's a great example. I think part of what we forget about is that when we look at the rest of the world and we see people who we think have it together, a lot of those folks are going through the same things or worse than what you're going through. I mean, I think you start with the idea, at least the, the Zen idea I think has merit, which is the first noble truth is that all life is suffering. And in some ways, everyone is going through their own suffering and having some difficulty that maybe you can't see. But when you talk about it, it makes you realize, one, you're not alone. Yes. Two, it's human. It's human to be that way. And thirdly, maybe there's a lesson, some sense of appreciation that comes from, right. comes from knowing that you're, you're in a not a good place because it's going to improve. Somebody said that if you're, if you're having a great run of luck, ride it, have fun. Right. And if you're not having good luck, be glad because it's bound to change. Right, exactly, <laughs> yeah. And that's where the optimist you know, has a place is because you can see that, that things will and can turn around. Yeah. Uh, one of the, you know, along this uh, topic of one, negativity. One, one thing I want to say, whatever we talk about a, an author, we're going to make sure that we put it in the show notes too. So we're going to have 
uh, Debbie Ford stuff uh, in the show notes for you if you want to follow her oh, wonderful writing. And I strongly suggest it. Uh, the Shadow Effect uh, actually comes with a DVD. Cool. And so it's really, really good. Uh, you know, along the line of negativity, uh, I think one of the things that has really helped me not beat up myself, um, like uh, I'm a recovering perfectionist. I learned that term <laughs> from another one of my teachers, or Brian Johnson, and uh, like I'm trying to not be a perfectionist. And, and so what used to happen is if I didn't complete a goal or if I wasn't as good as someone else uh, or if I didn't win in some kind of competition, mm -hmm. I would become really negative on myself. I would beat myself up for not being better and things like that. And I heard this teacher, uh, his name is Lanny Basham, and he was a teacher for the USA sharpshooting team. Uh, he competed in several Olympics, he was world class, and he's retired now. Uh, and what he talked about was, is that when you want to be at that elite level, when I say elite level, I mean the elite level of being your personal best, you know, to where you show up, you keep your word, you do what you say you're going to do, and you may not accomplish the goal, but you give it your very, very best. He said that the key to that is, is not looking at things as win or lose, but looking at them as win and learn. So if you don't accomplish the goal, you sit back and you say, hey, listen, what I learned from this? Yeah, yeah, or if yeah. life isn't going the yeah. way that you would like it to go, you know, you don't resist it, you accept it, and you say, what's the lesson here? And so, so the negativity uh, or the thing that is happening to you that's not to your liking is still present. You acknowledge it, you accept it, but you look at it as a learning opportunity. So that's what I've started to do. What about you? Yeah, I think that's similar. Um, to me, it's like fake it till you make it. I right. think part of it is just <clears throat> trying to be honest with yourself. Look at I'm depressed or I did a stupid thing and I'm embarrassed about it or I didn't communicate very well my point and I uh, was angry with somebody that uh, didn't deserve it or I'm just feeling like I'm a failure. I mean, I think the important thing is that there are things that come that are good from feeling that, not trying to suppress it and ignore it, but trying to right. feel it and try to, try, try to figure it all out whether it's true or not. Um, one of the things that I tried to do too, and this is a big deal late in my life, I didn't do this up until maybe four or five years ago, and that was to, to meditate. Because the clearing of the slate, you know, getting rid of the monkey mind and being calm for just a few minutes in the morning and a few minutes at night kind of helps you put things in perspective. It's like a, a reset button. It's like a, hitting a, a default reset on right. your computer. Um, and it doesn't wipe it away, but it does help you understand that you're going through something that's probably normal and probably something that you should look at, get the lesson out of, as you say, and move on. Absolutely. So what's, what's another example you can give in which uh, you started to do a paradigm shift about negativity? Oh, I think there's a lot of them. I think once, um, for, for me, it's a lot, a lot of it's related to aging because um, I, I felt really almost invincible for a long time. I mean, I don't mean to sound superior or, or arrogant, but I really felt strong and there was, like there wasn't anything that I could, uh, couldn't accomplish if I put my mind to it and worked really hard. And I don't think that's true anymore. I don't think it's true ever, actually. I don't think there's that right. much control that we have of our lives. I think it's really important to try as if we have that, but then detach from outcome and just right. let, let whatever happens happen. Yeah, be on the journey. Be on the journey. Yeah, so I think for me, aging, the, the, the thing with aging that really taught me a great lesson was this is going away. This is uh, putrefying right before your very eyes. <laughs> you know, the hair is turning white, the wrinkles are there. And that's your standard state now. It's not like, and I, and I don't, yeah, I'm okay with that. Right. Yeah, and I, that's what I want to be is okay with all of the stuff, right. all of the richness that life throws. Absolutely. And that, that's it. That's that uh, accepting what's, what's so and doing your best with, uh, with the colors that you have to paint the rest of your life with, right? That's right. That's the old uh, Reinhold Niebuhr uh, <laughs> quote, which is, you know, accepting what you... Uh, can't change, changing what you can, and being wise enough to know the difference. Yes. And so, uh, well, I think we kind of, you know, shared a little bit about how we feel about negativity, and we both see the gift in it, and uh, we accept it, and we don't try to suppress it, and uh, in doing so, we continue to grow. Continue to grow, but also caveat footnote here is that you, you never get past it. I mean, um, I had a rough day today, and it still bugs me. And I, I, when when I when the camera goes off and I'm driving home, it's it's gonna it's gonna rough me up a little bit. But that's okay. You know, I'm gonna be in that. I'm gonna wallow in it for a while, and then it'll it'll shift around. Right. Exactly. And that's the thing. You are you know that with your daily rituals and your practices, 
how you meditate that is going to shift. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I think what uh, some people and I've done this in the past is had I had the daily rituals in place, like the exercise, having a strong group of, of friends around me who are positive, who yeah. see big, that's yeah, big. He I mean, who you surround yourself with. You know, there's a quote that you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. <laughs> Tim Ferriss. Yep. And so, <laughs> totally cool. Yeah, it's totally cool. And so, uh, you know, when you do those daily rituals and you're reading and what you listen to is all positive, that opens a door for you to shift. You know, you accept what's going on in your world if it's not to your liking, uh, but you also pave the way with your daily habits to shift when it's time. That's exactly right. Two other things I'd mention about this, and that's that um, when you're in a situation where there's death or a severe loss and that creates anxiety and depression, that's a little different. That's a kind of a life-changing benchmark. That's a little different than what we're talking about. And I don't think that um, we want to discourage anybody from getting professional help or getting any kind of counseling. I've been through counseling. Man, it really helped me a lot. I think there's a, a, it's great to have a professional with another set of eyes kind of helping you talk things through. Um, and the main thing is for all people, whether they're men or women, but particularly men who are resistant to this, to have somebody that you can talk to. And if you can't have a, a bro like this dude, um, a professional is really, really re required and important, honestly. For totally me. agree. Yeah. Well, thank you, Rick, for today's show. Hey, thank you, man. Great to be here. Thank you. <laughs>